Good morning, Rose Scholars. Welcome back to Survive the Night. Now, I'm reading this the same day, so yesterday for you, today for me, that I read the other two. I just want to know what happens next. But, I don't want to read without you guys, even though I've technically read the whole book without you guys, because you're watching this after I've already read it. But I don't want to read it for myself, and then record myself reading it, because then it feels like cheating, and you don't get my live commentary. Anywho, we are in chapter 25, page 244. So close. Lights flash behind my closed lids, then they flash off again. I feel myself grow lighter and fight against it. It's like swimming. I try to push myself farther into the deep, fathomless ocean of sleep. My friends are down there. I see their faces in the darkness. Shannon's just inches away from me. Her bright pink lips parted in a little kid grin. You look deranged, she says, but the current pulls me up. The light grows brighter, and pain seeps in through my arms and legs. It stabs at me like knives. Shannon's face disappears. Morning. Is it? Yeah, it's morning. I open my eyes. It's dark. Blue lights flash from a machine to my left, and an IV stands on my right. Plastic cords connect to my wrists. A velvety night sky stretches beyond the hospital window, and in the distance, I can see the dusky glow of city lights. Someone's shouting. I blink, listening. The shouting cuts off abruptly. Then, female victim, 17 years old. Uh, they must be talking about me. Sleep tugs at me. I don't fight it. Every, everything's so much easier when I'm asleep. My eyelids flutter. An ER tech pauses in front of my room. His hands resting on a stretcher. Suddenly I'm wide awake. A sheet covers the body, but a bare leg wearing a muddy black boot dangles over the side of the stretcher, along with a single pink-tipped mock hair. Oh, no. Shanna, I whisper. I, I try to push myself out of bed, but my arms wobble beneath my weight, and I crash back against my pillows. Darkness flickers at the corners of my eyes, and before I can move, the morphine pulls me under. I hope that doesn't cause a relapse. My eyes twitch open hours later, still heavy with sleep. Something woke me. I lie curled on my side, listening for a sound. The machines beep. The car honks on the street outside. A nurse in the hall says something about going for coffee. My eyelids grow heavier. I'm about to drift off again. Wind movement flickers at the edge of my vision. My eyes shoot open, and I sit up in bed. Take it easy. That nail is still on my door. Uh, the mattress creaking beneath my weight. Someone stands in the hall outside my room, a shadow hovering near the doorway. Hmm. Mom? My voice cracks. It feels raw and unused. Whoever's watching me doesn't move. I curl my fingers around the scratchy hospital sheets and sh uh, what? scoot back against the headboard. My heart thuds against my chest. The shadow shifts. Man, quit with the S's and the H's. What? <coughs> my chest hurts. Shanna? I say, wait. What? Shanna drifts forward, dazed. I feel my sweat coats her skin and her hair frames her face in limp, tangled clumps. She wears a hospital gown. Is she dreaming? I don't trust it. I don't trust anybody. What? Anyway, what was I saying? Tangled clumps. Okay, I remember that. She wears a hospital gown, just like mine. But hers is several sizes too big, and the neck droops over her shoulder. 
revealing a deep red or deep red gouges on her neck and chest. Oh my goodness. I push back my blankets and climb out of bed. The drugs make me slow and clumsy. I don't need drugs for that. <laughs> oh, what? The room spins and I have to lean against the wall for a second to regain my balance. The dizziness subsides and I yank the IV out of my hand. Don't do that. And then stumble across the room and grab the door to keep myself steady. Pins and needles race up my injured leg. Gritting my teeth together, I take the last few steps for Shanna and throw my arms around her neck. You're alive, I whisper. Tears spring to my eyes. Shanna feels small beneath my arms, her bones thin and fragile. I hold her tighter, but she doesn't hug me back. Uh-oh. What? Her hands hang next to her sides, limp. Shanna? I loosen my grip slightly, but then Shanna jerks her arms around me. Her fingers crawl to the back of my head and press into my scalp. Chipped nails dig into my head. That sounds painful. I can feel it. I don't like it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think it might actually be a nightmare. What was I doing? What are you doing? I squirm, but she tightens her grip. Her nails claw at my skin. Yeah. Dang. I was almost willing. Almost willing. What was I doing? Oh. Wait, you're hurting me. I start to pull away, but then I see something jutting out of Shanna's back, and I hesitate. The object, object looks sharp and long as a steak knife, but curved in a subtle arc. I raise a trembling finger and it sinks, sinks deeper into Shanna's body. Ugh. Nerves prickle over my arms and the back of my neck. I push her off of me and she stumbles back a few feet, giggling. I'd just jump out the window. I can deal with the window. Where was I? No, I say. She's trying to be funny. This is one of her stupid jokes. The muscle in my leg twitch is telling me to run. I edge backward. Go for that window. Shanna, what the beep is going on? The light hits her face and dread washes over me. Skin droops from her cheeks and jaw. Her mouth stretches. This smile is different from Shanna's giddy little kid grin. There's no joy in it. It widens, all jagged teeth and bleeding gums. Ugh. Her normally brown eyes turn icy blue. I whisper. The scratch I had left across my face flares like a warning. This thing couldn't possibly be the real Shanna. Shanna's dead. The creature from the subway took her body, just like it took Aya's body and Lawrence's body. And now it's come for me. The creature's blue eyes darken into twin black pools. Something appears from deep within Shanna's throat. It pulses and writhes against the roof of her mouth. It pushes on her teeth. Ah, oh, this is gross. That tentacle uncurls over Shanna's cracked lips. It lashes at me, gray scales. <laughs> uh, Game of Thrones. Flashing under the dim hospital lights and cuts whip-like into my cheek. The tentacle crashes into the wall behind me and the plaster crumbles under its weight. Terror grips my chest and I run for the door, but Shanna darts into my path and pushes me back into the room. I lose my balance and slam into the tile. The pain shoots through my hips. The tentacle pops around my pops lops around my pops loops, I don't know. I can't read today. Tiny jagged claws flare out from the scales and cut into my flesh. And I scream and kick, but the tentacle constricts and the claws dig into my leg like a grappling hook. Mabel. I push myself to my hands and knees and start to crawl, but the tentacle yanks my legs out from under me. My forehead smacks into the floor and darkness blossoms in front of my eyes. 
my head feels thick and dizzy. I can't move. A shadow falls over me. I can practically picture the tentacle hovering above my head, its claws about to dig into the soft flesh around my neck. I groan and try to roll over, but pain washes over me in waves. A tear forms in the corner of my eye. This is it. I'm going to die. Voices sound in the hall just outside my door, but they fade before I can call out for help. Shanna's bare feet pad across the floor. In silence. I roll onto my back. Something flickers at the corner of my eye, and I flinch and throw my arms around my face again, expecting the shadow to lunge, but nothing happens. I lower my arms, trembling. The doorway where Shannon had stood is empty. I push myself to my knees, I start around the small hospital room. Does she run away? Or is she still here, hiding? The blue machine beeps in the corner. My IV stands next to the bed, cords dangling to the floor. The curtain rustles. My heart thuds in my ears. I rise to my feet. Pain flutters through my bad knee, making me cringe. The door to the hall is just past the window. The shadow's behind the curtain. I'll never make it. The curtain moves again. I grit my teeth and creep across the room. The tile chills my bare feet and my fingers shake. Goosebumps right, raise the hair on my arms and neck. I reach forward, grab the curtain, and make it back, revealing nothing but an open window. See? Although I guess it might have just been a hallucination. A cool breeze drifts into the room, rustling the curtain. The fear drains from my body. I exhale and peer outside, half expecting to spot Shanna racing across the street below. But the glass just reflects my hospital room back at me. I see the blue heart monitor, my abandoned IV, and the purple sheets on my bed. I lean closer. Wait, what? A figure huddles beneath my bed, watching me with hungry eyes. Now I'm hungry. What? Terror washes over me. I scream and whirl around as a tentacle whips out from under the bed and slams into my chest. It knocks the air from my lungs, and suddenly I'm sliding across the floor. I crash into the me metal hospital cart, and the cart topples, glass shatters, and medical supplies rain down on me. Ooh. That's dangerous. I throw my hands over my face. Shanna skitters out from under the bed on all fours. Ooh. She moves like an insect, her arms and legs jerky and disjointed. I try to stand, but Shanna crawls on top of me, pinning me down with her legs. She leans closer, her face inches from my own. Her mouth slackens and droops open with the weight of the writhing tentacle. The tentacle curls around my neck, pinching my skin. I gasp for air and dig my hands into the scaly mass. I try to pull it away, but the tentacle is solid muscle. Yeah, good luck. It tightens around my neck until my head grows uh, light. Shanna grabs my wrists and slams them against the ground. I kick and push against her arms, but Shanna's too strong. She doesn't even seem to notice me struggling beneath her. I inhale, and a tiny bit of oxygen trickles into my lungs. Then the tentacle constricts, crushing my throat. Ow. Let go. I gasp. Darkness blurs the edges of my eyesight. Shanna cocks her head, considering me. It just, it's a strange reptilian gesture. Sorry. I just had to make sure. Another tentacle oozes from her mouth and slithers toward my arm, coiling around my wrists. Dizziness overwhelms me. I open and close my mouth. Shanna unhinges her jaw, and another tentacle slips past her lips. Why? And hits my chest with a hard, wet thud. It feels like an oily rope. I cringe as it gropes along my skin and tightens around my throat. My head pounds. The room starts to go black. The room flickers in and out of focus. The realization hits me. Shanna is going to kill me. 
this monster is going to kill me. I'm going to die if I don't do something. I move my arms and jerk my head forward, smacking Shanna on the forehead. Pain oozes through my skull, but she just blinks. Surprised, but shifts her body forward so she can hold my head down with both hands. She crouches over my good leg, pinning it to the floor. I grit my teeth together and shift my bed leg out from under her. Pain throbs beneath my kneecap. Nausea rises in my throat. I choke it back and drive my ruined knee into Shanna's chest. Ow. How does that work? Shanna flies off of me. Her tentacles uncurl from my arms and neck and whip back full, uh, toward her mouth. Pain like fire burns through my leg. I push myself to my feet. The ache makes my head throb. My head hurts. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Shanna moving toward me with that same jerky, disjointed crawl. I hobble from the door. The nurse's station is just down the hall. If I can get out of this room and shot for them, I might be able to save myself. Pain shoots up my, uh, my leg with every step I take. I'll be watching you. But I bite my lip and push myself through it. The hospital door yawns open. Just three more steps. Yawns open. Two more. Help! I gasp. Someone, please! A tentacle shoots out of Shanna's mouth and wraps around my ankle. An agonized scream rips from my throat. I leap for the door, but the tentacle pulls me down. My cheek uh, slams against the tile, and for a second, all I see is black. I groan and try to push myself back to my feet. The room swims around me. I said squirrels. I guess that would have worked, too. Shanna crawls toward me. She's twisted her arms around so that her hands are, uh, are facing the wrong way, and her elbows uh, jut out to the sides. Eee. Her bones stick out at bizarre angles, pulling her skin taut. Empty eye sockets stare out from opposite sides of her head, and her mouth widens, taking up her entire face. Ugh. Ugh. Sweaty pink hair falls over her forehead and sticks to her cheeks. I try to move my leg, but everything below my waist has gone numb. I grope along the ground for something to help me uh, pull myself up, and my fingers find the cool metal bars of the hospital bed. I grab hold and pull. My muscles burn, but I'm not strong enough to stand. My legs flop beneath me. They wait. Shanna closes in on me. I grope along the ground for a weapon, and my fingers find a long rubber cord. Mm -hmm. The emergency call button. I yank on the cord and the button clatters to the ground. Shanna leaps from me, but I grab hold of the button before she lands on my chest. She digs into my shoulders with both hands and shoves me to the floor. My head smacks against the tile. Drool drips from Shanna's lips and pops onto my cheek. Ugh. I can feel that. I press the emergency button, but it's too late. Shanna lowers her face. This can't be the end, I think. And then I wrap uh, the cord around the monster's throat. I pull tight. Tighter. Uh, I mean, whatever works. Spit bubbles and around Shanna's mouth. I stare at her neck so I don't have to look at her face. I pull the cord tighter. Her skin goes pale. My hands start to shake. Shanna moves her hands from my shoulders and gropes at the cord. A strand of pink hair falls to Shanna's neck, dislodging something inside me. The color is called cotton candy. I helped her pick it out. It'll make you look innocent, I told her. She cackled and shoved the dye into her pocket without paying for it. I could never look innocent, she shot back. A sob builds in my throat. I choke it down and pull the cord tighter. Tighter. This isn't Shanna, I tell myself. Shanna's already dead. The monster tries to tug the cord away, but it digs into her and she can't get a good grip. She scratches at her neck uselessly, leaving deep red scratches on her skin. The muscles in my arms burn with pain. I don't have much strength left. Shanna gasps, her fingers still clawing at the cord. I squeeze my eyes shut so I don't have to watch the life fade from her face. Shanna collapses on her chest. The tentacles slither back into her mouth, slowly at first, 
then fast, like a tape measure snapping back in place. I drop the cord and fall back onto the floor, panting. I'm confused. I am so confused. I drop the cord and fall back onto the floor, panting. Tears spill down my cheeks. The floor beneath me trembles. I stiffen, but it's just footsteps. The thud closer, then a nurse appears up in my doorway. Is everything alright? Oh my... The nurse screams. I try to open my mouth. I want to tell her that it's okay. The monster is dead. It's finally over. But the nurse starts yelling, and then another nurse races into the room with a stretcher. They lift me off the floor and onto the stretcher. They're talking to me, asking me questions, but it's like someone put the world on mute. Their mouths open and close without making a sound. Let me go, I think. I try to move my legs, but nothing happens. Panic builds in my chest. I try to lift my foot and then wiggle a toe. My legs stay still. I can't move. That's not good. Let's see. Okay. Um. Do I want to just have this one? You know what? One long video for tomorrow, I guess, and then I'll do something else. What? Well, then again, how how many pages is it again? It's seven. That's right. Yeah, that's not really that long. Chapter twenty-six, page two hundred and fifty-six. That one, I'm not too. Um, disappointed that the nurse's screams still echo through my head a week later as I hobble out of the hospital balanced on brand new crutches. What? I stop next to a concrete pillar and tip my head back, letting the sun warm my face. The stiff padding digs into my armpits. I close my eyes and I actually think we have some crutches here. Ah, oh, my other knee! I close my eyes, and a memory flashes across my flickering lids. We need a stretcher, someone yells, and then, she's crashing. <laughs> my eyes snap back open. I can't stop replaying those final moments when I'd been so certain I was going to die. I stare down at the stiff white cast stretching from my ankle to mid-thigh. My toes stick out at the bottom. My mom painted them green last night and drew a tiny picture of a turtle on the cast near my ankle. I wiggle my green toes. It's a miracle I can move them. A miracle that I can even stand. Just want to make sure you know what she's taking for the pain, how often, and... Mom's voice drifts out of the hospital, interrupted by the glass doors sliding shut. I've been a parent just as long as you have, Dad's saying, when the doors slide open again. I'm perfectly capable of giving her medication while you're at work. They step out of the hospital together and stop arguing when they see me listening. I told you guys already, I reposition the crutches beneath my arms and half turn so I can face them. No drugs. Mom sighs and fumbles with her threadbare tote bag. I painted her nails too, against much protesting. The lawyers really shouldn't have um, dreamy fingernails. The doctor said a little ibuprofen is fine, she says. You're recovering from a torn ACL, a major surgery, and no drugs. My voice is stern, and I give her my very best and serious face. It's something I've insisted on since getting out of surgery. There were a few days when I was too groggy and out of it to keep the doctors from giving me ibuprofen. But now that I'm healthy enough to feed myself and walk with crutches, I've been adamant about refusing all pain relievers. Even the ones they say I can't get addicted to. I haven't forgotten the promise I made to myself in the subway. I'm done with all of that. If you say so. Mom taps the pills into her bag, shaking her head. How are you feeling, kiddo? Dad scratches his eyebrow. Now I have to. You mean since like 20 seconds ago when you asked me the last time? I force myself to smile, even though the expression feels unnatural. The therapist I've been seeing for the last few days said smiling would trick my body into feeling happy, but so far it hasn't worked. It's not that I'm not grateful to be alive, but the grateful feeling is tangled up with horror and guilt and shock. 
like how necklaces get knotted together when you leave them at the bottom of a jewelry box. It's impossible to separate one, of, one emotion from the rest. The smile pulls up the corners of my mouth. I'm feeling great there, I say. This is pie. I forgot about that. Slow down, Mom says, looping an arm around my shoulder. You need to rest. I'm fine, I say. To be honest, I don't care if the crutches are uncomfortable or if Mom acts like a little bossy or Dad asks a million questions. I don't care if my knee aches when I'm trying to fall asleep or if physical therapy is grueling or if taking a painkiller would make all this easier. I take the pain and the frustration a million times over. It's so much better than the alternative. Dad opens the car door and starts loading my things, almost at thighs, into the back seat. I hand him one of my crutches. Casey? The voice comes from behind me. I turn, the other crutch still propped beneath my arm. Madison? Dun dun dun! Madison grins at me, holding up a balloon shaped like a soccer ball with the words, Get better soon, written across it in blocky blue print. I would have come sooner, but I didn't know if you wanted visitors. Now I'm dueling, sorry. She shoves her free hand into the pocket of her bright green jeans and stares down at her scuffed sneakers. The last time I saw her was from the passenger seat of Shannon's Buick. Heat clamps my neck of her memory. I'm glad you came, I say, offering an awkward smile. I didn't realize you knew I was here. My doctors didn't think I should travel after my surgery, so my parents kept me at the hospital in Manhattan instead of transferring to Philly. Are you kidding? Everyone at school is talking about you. Madison shifts her weight from foot to foot, then hands me the balloon. Anyway, I got this for you. I think it's supposed to be for, like, an eight-year-old boy, but whatever. It's so sweet, I say, taking the balloon. It's kind of tricky trying to hold on to it while also gripping my crutch, but I manage. Madison flashes me a sad smile and clears her throat. I also wanted to say that I'm sorry, she says, for what happened at my party last week. And, you know, she takes a deep breath, because of what happened to your friends. I wind the balloon string around my fingers. I still remember the way the ropes groaned as Julie's body swung from the pipes, and how Woody's hand suddenly went limp as the monster burrowed through his chest. I pulled the balloon string tight, watching the tip of my finger turn blue. By his last words echo through my head. We're all gonna die. Casey? Madison touches my arm. Sorry, I muttered, shaking the pins and needles feeling out of my fingers. I try not to think about it. Wait, what? Madison shoes on her lower lip. I heard Shanna took an entire bottle of her Ritalin. My brother used to be on that. That's why she killed all those people. What? I cleared my throat. She was on a lot of drugs, I say. And the cops still think she was responsible for everything? Madison asks. They do. I stare down at my cast. It's not my fault. Shanna got blamed for the murders. No one believed any story about, uh, or my story about the monster. Especially not after I tested positive for ecstasy. Oh, yeah. And the nurses saw Shanna attack me in the hospital. It all fit together so perfectly. Except no one could explain the bloody gouges on Shanna's arms. Or why the other bodies were, ne or were never recovered. Even Sam disappeared in the time that the runner left to get help and the ambulance arrived. If his disappeared, why didn't she get taken? His body vanished, like something had reached out of the subway and dragged him back underground. I flex my fingers, nearly losing my grip on the balloon. These are the details I focus on. They remind me that I'm not crazy, that what I saw was real. Madison takes a step closer, lowering her voice. Is it true that you had to, you know, kill her? It lump forms in my throat. I don't want to think about how I tied the cord around Shanna's throat and pulled until she could no longer breathe. 
My hands tingle at the memory. It wasn't Shanna, I tell myself. Shanna was already dead when they brought the body into the hospital. I didn't murder her. I murdered the monster, the thing that killed her and took over her body. Cotton candy colored hair flutters through my memory. I flinch letting the blue string unravel from my finger. It was self-defense, I tell her. Luckily, Madison nods. She grabs my hand and squeezes. I'm sorry, she says. Awkward silence stretch stretches between us. I'm good at those. Madison clears her throat and glances at my knee. I heard that you had another surgery, she says. You're probably benched for good now, huh? This time, my smile feels almost natural. It's easier to focus on the medical stuff. The surgeries and rehab have been so challenging that I can almost go five minutes without thinking about Sam's last words or how light I have felt in my arms. I lean into my crutch and stretch my bulky cast out in front of me. Actually, doctors say I should be uh, as good as new, I say, winning my green toes. I should be back out on the field this fall. A nervous grin flashes across Madison's face. You're going out for soccer again in the fall? Really? As soon as I'm done with physical therapy, I say. Madison squeals and wraps me in a hug. That's amazing. I can't wait, she says. Yeah, well, if you don't get too comfortable with being cap captain, I say, untangling myself from her arms. Bring it on, Madison says. Casey, Mom pokes her head out the car window. We're going to be late for your first physical therapy appointment. Huh. Tell Madison uh, goodbye. Madison squeezes my arm. I'll see you on the field. See you on the field, I say. Madison drops back to her car, but she turns to wave at me one last time before climbing inside. I toss my crutch into the station wagon. Dad starts to get out of the seat to help, but I wave him off. I got it, I say. Before I can pull myself into the car, the ground trembles and I stiffen, immediately alert. A train rumbles through the subway below me. I stare through a nearby grate, nerves quickly. For a second, I think I see them. Shanna reaches out of the darkness, her chipped fingernail grazing my hand. Strobe lights illuminate the tips of Sam's hair and the hard edges of his jaw. Julie tosses back her black curls and fumbles with the onyx ring on her finger. Does she still have that by the end? I don't remember if it said she dropped it or not. Then the rumble of the train fades into the distance and they disappear. I release a ragged breath, my lips suddenly cold. I see them all the time. Every girl with winged eyeliner is Aya, every guy in a Hawaiian shirt is Woody. But when I look again, I'll see that the girl is too tall or too thin. The guy is older than he seemed a second ago. My friends are dead. They aren't coming after me. That's what I keep telling myself. Huh. Well, that was depressing. What do you guys think? Hmm. What time is it now? Yeah, I figured. Well, at least I'm done. So, I don't know what I'll do for Tuesday. I... I wonder. What I'll do for Thursday. I'll look around, see if I can find any good books. Um, either suggestions in the comment section, or just going up to the local Barnes and Noble and seeing what I find. You know, something that jumps out at me. Not like that. Um, so, where did the tentacles go? Uh, surely when they would perform an autopsy on Shanna's body, they would see that she's not human. Why did they take Sam and not her? Why didn't he have his phone on him? Or her, I don't know. Did it say? Just a jogger, that's all I can remember. Anyway, before I get too much distracted and whatnot, 
Let me know your guys' thoughts. Would you have done anything to the story? Would you have changed it in any way? What do you think you would write about, I suppose? How would you write it? Uh, let me know, and until next time, goodbye everybody. Oh, one of the reasons I've been reading a lot of these different books for the channel and everything is because um, me and Miga are still working on that book. So uh, hopefully something will come of that soon now that he has a daughter. Anyway.